the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. The Mirror had their lip-reading team out at the Coronation. Harry is believed to have joked about his busy day and told Eugenie's husband, Jack Brooksbank, he would be leaving at about quarter to four, to which Jack replied, Oh, really? When? Harry was also believed to have said that's funny to Brooksbank while smiling as they waited for Charles to arrive at Westminster Abbey. While walking in, Harry gave courteous greetings to some of the other guests, saying hello and morning and nice to see you to various people, none of them with the title Duke of Wales. The lip readers also caught a moment of frustration by the King. Upon arriving in the Diamond Jubilee State Coach at Westminster Abbey, it is believed Charles said to Camilla, We can never be on time, there's always something. Fashion brand Dior Humble bragged on Twitter, sharing a photo of Harry. Tailoring fit for royalty, Dior is honoured to have dressed Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, for the coronation of King Charles III in a custom design by Kim Jones. Seen arriving at Westminster Abbey, gain an insight into the savoir faire of his three-piece suit next. Social media reaction was, as with all things Harry, mixed. The PR teams were out in full force. William and Kate released a short film set to music showing royal fans their day beginning at Kensington Palace. The Daily Beast watched the film and report there were shots of streets filled with brightly adorned horses and service personnel and cheering crowds, as well as Charles and Camilla in the Gold State coach and William and Kate and their children in the carriage. Next came film of the wider royal family on the Buckingham Palace balcony. The final image was of Charles and Camilla waving to the crowds on their second sortie out on the palace balcony. Also released are photos by Chris Jackson from within Buckingham Palace showing Charles and Camilla's perspective of the crowds below cheering as they wave during their balcony moment. It's a nice shot where we see the crowned monarchs in front of a sea of people. Some royal watchers wonder how Harry and Meghan will feel about the media mainly ignoring Archie's birthday. Palace Injury will be right back. I'm Nina Hobson, ex-police detective from the UK. I've worked on every crime mentionable, from murder to kidnap to stalking to fraud. When I left the force, I launched my own investigations firm that soon became a global operation. I'm also a single mother of two to two members of my team, my son Harrison and daughter Amy. Every week we'll be getting first-hand accounts from psychological experts, operatives, former criminals, actual victims of the crimes that we investigate, and of course, my very own flesh and blood. From Storic Media, you're listening to Codename Siren, a true crime podcast. Available on YouTube and all major podcast platforms. Thanks to some listeners who left us reviews last week, with the episodes being a little longer, we thought we would hold these back until after the coronation. Lisa left a five-star review, one of the best BRF pods. Love this podcast, bite-sized, amusing and informative. The host is fun and doesn't take himself too seriously. Most of all, his take on Meghan and Harry is realistic and sensible. Highly recommend. Cole Brittany also left a five-star review. Short and sweet, thanks for keeping us informed. Well, thanks very much to Lisa and Cole Brittany. A lot of fun stories came out of the coronation, including one guest who confused viewers. The mystery man was filmed seated in one of the pews with a shaggy white hairstyle and matching moustache, and sported large aviated sunglasses and wore a medal proudly around his neck. One Twitter user said, I don't know much about the coronation, but I do know this is obviously a disguise, and 100% they're going to try and steal the crown jewels. Fans of TV's peep show were sad that Big Sue's didn't get the hookup for the coronation. The Mirror reminds us many were surprised when actress Sophie Winkleman was spotted paying her respects to the Queen at her funeral last September. But this time around, she was nowhere to be seen, despite fans spending the entire ceremony looking out for her. Disappointed we never saw Big Sue's, wrote one on Twitter. Sophie was even a guest at the 2011 wedding of William and Kate. Apparently Big Sue's children are very close in age to Kate and William's kids, and Sophie has spoken in detail about her daughter Maud's close bond with Prince George. In an interview with Hello, she said, We were invited to tea at Kensington Palace just before Princess Charlotte was born. Maud and George got on very well. He was a very clever, articulate little boy and was speaking long before other toddlers his age. Then there's the story of the tribe who worshipped Prince Philip, who honoured King Charles as son of their god. As the story goes, as explained by the Mirror, the tribe's people of Vanuatu, a nation made up of about 80 islands in the South Pacific Ocean, adored Prince Philip and saw him as a godlike spiritual figure. According to ancient tales, the son of the mountain spirit travelled overseas to a distant land before marrying a powerful woman and returning home. 
the Kasten people around the villages of Johannan and Yakul on Tana Vanuatu believe Prince Philip is the son referred to in this legend, with the theory strengthening after he visited the remote island in 1974. According to Kirk Huffman, research associate at the Australian Museum and honorary curator of the National Museum at the nation's Vanuatu Cultural Centre, the movement has nothing to do with worshipping a white man, as they believe the Duke of Edinburgh was originally from their island, not from anywhere in Europe or other remote areas like that. When King Charles visited Vanuatu in 2018, he was made High Chief and took a sip from a cup, a special kava, which was said to be reserved for special occasions, only last consumed when Philip visited 44 years previously. And there you have it. Hey, if you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, YouTube, or your podcast app of choice. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to you, John McDermott's Palace Intrigue. Good times. Mm-hmm.